Hi, so I did my signature assignment on the male gaze. So the male gaze was a term that was first coined by Laura Mobley. She's a feminist film theorist who is currently now a professor of media studies in Burbank Uni in University of London. Her most famous work being the visual pleasure and narrative cinema that she wrote in 19 1975, where she did most of her work in the 1970s and mid um, 70s through the 90s. So what is a male gaze? Um, so the male gaze is really a perspective in which we take in from the heterosexual male usually. Uh, we can take this in literature and media, uh, most notably in films. And a lot, and a lot of the times, um, this depiction of the male gaze is really viewing the women and representing the women in a passive object in um, the male desire. Um, objectifying the woman and such. Laura Mobley gets most of her influences for this theory that she coined from the psychoanalysis of Sigmund Freud. And in her article, she talks a lot about psychoanalysis. Um, and she refers a lot to Sigmund Freud and, and um, ideologies such as a political weapon. And the political weapon is mostly what she talks about is um, how Sigmund Freud talks about the male phallic quite a bit. And the male phallic being more metaphorically than more literally. Um, the way that Sigmund Freud talks about women is they are castrated men. So what this phallic represents and what Laura Mobley wants us to understand is that this phallic represents power. And notably when Sigmund Freud says that the female is a castrated man, basically, which means that she doesn't have that power that men do. Um, and another ideology that Laura Mobley takes from Sigmund Freud is influence um, from Sigmund Freud is the ideology of sociophilia. So sociophilia is a pleasure that we get from looking. Uh, Mobley uses um, the sociophilia to weave into her theory of the male gaze um, that a lot of the times men depict these women in films to get pleasure from them. Um, again, coining the term sociophilia. Uh, Mobley states in her article, Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema, the gender power as asymmetrically is controlling force in cinema and constructed for the pleasure of the male viewers, which, um, which is rooted in patriarchal ideologies. Um, this really means that the male viewer is a targeted audience. Therefore, their needs have to be met first. Mobley, um, and Mobley really wants us to understand, um, this male gaze kind of being kind of objectified and kind of we're living in a, in a patriarchal society and then thus this leads to the objectification of females in film, media, and literature. And as a matter of fact, talking about perspectives of the male in, um, in films, there's a statistic that shows that in 2019, 84.9% of film directors were male in comparison to 2019, where 92.9% were male. So this has made a change and, and hopefully it does um, start to make a change. Uh, notably noting, noting this is um, a lot of the films that were being intaked by our society are from the point of view of a male. And when we come to comparison to the demographics of society and to the demographics of the consumption of film being portrayed from the point of view of these um, heterosexual men, it starts sort of becoming a more damaging thing, um, especially since we live in a very diverse society and, um, you know, a lot of the times we're just taking the input and the perspective of this small percentage of our demographics. So this is important because theorist wants us to let us know that the stories that we hear, that we internalize through film, can really influence how we think and how we organize the world around us. You see, film has a ability to create a fantasy, to create dreams and desires. 
um, but most importantly, they have the ability to hold the values of a culture. And Theorist wants us to really be aware of that and to be aware of the power that film holds. And also, yes, to be aware that they do create fantasy and they create a fantasy world around us. But also to notice how important film can really be in one's life. Um, how can, it, it could influence a person's life as well. And give us those 120 minutes or so to really, you know, wear someone else's shoes for a second. To really understand their point of view from hearing and seeing this moving picture and really transforming us to, to their own world, basically. Um, that's another message that Movely and her theory and these feminist theorists wants to understand the power of film. Um, and to bring awareness by talking about this and, and talking about the male gaze and talking about the objectification and females in a lot of these films. Um, and through this presentation, uh, I would like to analyze a few of the films that were in articles through these theorists as well and how they analyzed them and, and kind of took in from that perspective. So the male gaze, when we analyze this, we really are analyzing it from three points of views. One of them being how men view women. The second one being how women view themselves. The third one being is how women view other women. Before we start off analyzing films, I would like to start off with an article that Laura Wolfley, um wrote. And it's called The Myth of Pandora, A Psychoanalytical, Psychoanalytical Approach. So she talks about the, the myth, the Greek myth of Pandora. The Greek myth of Pandora. And this uh, Greek myth really talks about how uh, she, Pandora, she's uh, portrayed as this beautiful woman and she's given this box. She is not allowed to open. However, Pandora's curiosity gets the best of her and she opens this box and in this box contains all the evils of the world. And she, when she opens them, she unleashes them. This story is really sending a message is um, that women brought misery to men and misery to the world so that was an article that um that laura Mowley wrote and she analyzed the story of pandora um the first film that i'd actually like to talk about is the chat the chat was written in 1915. it is a silent film that tells a story of a woman who has borrowed a huge amount of money from from this man uh, she obtains the money to pay him back through her husband, um, and, and pays him, and tries to pay him back in cash. However, the man does not, um, she does not take this payment. Instead, the man wants the payment to be, um, paid in sex. However, the woman does not, does not agree to this, um, does not apply to, like, does not, want to do this she just wants to pay him back in cash the man does not take this um type of payment coming from her from cash and instead he brands the woman and takes her instead um and keeping her as one of his possessions the second film i'd like to talk about is also a silent film it's called Un de chez Adelot. it's a french film i probably butchered that name so I apologize. This film was made in 1929. It was co-written by Luis Bonuel and Salvador Dali. Um, Salvador Dali is a very um, notorious artist in his time. So this is an abstract short film and um, theorist and film analyst analyze the film, especially the scene um, from the man has a razor blade in his hand and kind of um, Cuts, cuts eye of the, the young women and uh, theorists have found this to be a symbolic meaning that the perspective of the female is being taken away and um, we're just going to be seeing the perspective of a man in this film. So, and then the films that I, the third film that I like to talk about, well, mostly films is kind of in a genre right now, is a Disney princess um, genre. 
we are hopefully common with the Disney princess genre and how a lot of the plots um, kind of the female protagonist, their only way to be happy is once they find their Prince Charming and once they find their true love. Um, and when we think and analyze through these films, we really start to see the demographics of the audience who consume these films are children, um, particularly younger girls who see th these type of films. Um, also, when we study the, the roles that these um, genders are being played, such as a man being portrayed as this heroic, brave character, and, and the female being um, portrayed as this dainty little princess, waiting for her Prince Charming to come save her. Um, this, these films are significantly important, especially since they're being reached out to children. Um, the consumption that they take in, a lot of times... You know, they they learn from these films. Uh, they're, they're educated a lot of times through their own screens. And when we think about it, uh, studies show that children spend a significant amount of time on their screens. I think it's, um, well, statistics show that children from 8 to 10 spend 6 to 6 hours a day on the screen. And um, children from 11 to 14 spend 9 hours a day on their screen. Moving on to um, more kind of famous film, famous uh, famous franchise called Transformers, Michael Bay's Transformers. I think um, this is a very mainstream film that is, is portrayed in media. Uh, when we really begin to dissect Transformers, we really see how kind of Michael Bay is more of a misogynistic person. <laughs> And, um, well, we can see this, um, being, like, analyzed and, and theorists and film analyzers, um, see this perspective a lot of the times when they're looking through the women's perspective. They, they mostly just see her just being there and not really, um, being part of the plot. Really, when the woman is, is put there, the woman is sexualized in a way, um, and they're just really just put there to please a man. When it um, when we think about like the the scenes of Megan Fox opening the hood, or um, when she's like just laying down on a bicycle, we can see um, see how that objectifies her. And especially when we start to think about the camera angle and how this is moved through, um, I guess Michael Bay wants us to see from the perspective of the male. Especially from Sam, the main character, he wants us to like transform ourselves into his his lenses, into Sam's lenses, and to see what he's like seeing and how he's like gazing upon Megan Fox and stuff like that, and these beautiful women and and um, and such, kind of objectifying her. So through film. Both women and girls learn their appearance as kind of a social currency. And they begin to take on their own male gaze perspective. They begin to see themselves through the male gaze's eyes. In the article Fredrickson and Roberts, written in 1997, he talks about, well, they talk about the self-objectification. Um, this is, again, where the woman takes in the perspective of the male um, and they, um, self-objectify themselves. So, being a woman in the culture that sexually objectifies them, um, objectifying the theory that women really, their, their worth is, um, and how they present themselves and what they wear and, and, um, what cosmetics do they use and, and such and and this can really be a damaging thing uh women start to body shame themselves they start to um monitor what they they're consuming and kind of the cosmetics and the sums amount of money that they spend on these cosmetics to make them look more presentable uh, i mean many times also causing self-hate to to them because they then they'll never be portrayed as like 
the hot girl or something like that. And it can be very damaging to a woman and a girl's self-esteem growing up. Um, so this topic is an importance of me for these very such things is I've been that little girl watching Disney um, films and watching Transformers and um, I've been that girl who wastes a lot of money on cosmetics and makeup just to present myself and a lot of money on clothes and kind of thinking that my worth is really on how others think about me and how I present myself and how desirable I am to the op- um to the opposite gender and I think a lot of women go through that as well another reason why this is such of an importance to me is because the career that I want to pursue um I have aspirations to get into law school and become a lawyer and hopefully maybe one day fighting for women's rights fighting for equality and I think if we continue to portray females in this way, continue to objectify them, I think it really sets us back. And I think it really diminishes that power that the female has and um, and, and such through the male gaze, kind of taking, stripping that power away from her. Um, so I guess many theorists, well, many theorists don't really want us, many fem- feminist film theorists don't really want us to switch roles completely and like make the man the the object um more or less just showing more of that female perspective showing more of how we see the world around us and exposing that to audiences all around um you know really sending the message that women can be heroes too and women want to be portrayed as heroes too thank you